Hey guys, welcome to Star Wars Timeline. Today's character highlight is about Dash Randar. As always, this video will be broken down into three sections. First, I'll give you his story overview. Second, we'll move on to his personality traits and his abilities. Last, I'll talk about my impressions of this character and what I hope to see in the future. As always, guys, thank you so much for checking out my channel. If you enjoy my character highlights, please consider subscribing to the channel. Anyway, let's begin. So who is this character? We know that Dash Randar originally was developed for the Shadows of the Empire multimedia project. It featured comic book, it featured a, a novel, and also a Nintendo 64 video game. But interestingly enough, prior to that release of those official contents, he first appears in the Star Wars Insider Magazine issue 28, as well as Star Wars Galaxy Magazine issue 6 in 1996. Obviously, all of it foreshadowing the character's appearance in these greater uh, medias. We know that he's a human male smuggler and a freelancer. He was originally born on Karelia before the fall of the Empire, shortly a few years after. He's maybe four or five years older than Luke Skywalker. And he's born to a family of, uh, that owns a shipping business. As a young man, he always strived for independence, and he joined the Imperial Navy Academy, trying to be like a, an ace pilot. Uh, his parents refused to sell business to Prince Shizor, a leader of the Black Sun Crime Syndicate. And Shizor did something terrible. He sabotaged his brother Stanton's freighter, killing his older brother in the process. And his parents were exiled from the Cold Worlds, and Dash was also expelled from the Imperial Academy. This led to his uh, alternate uh, path in life. He became a freelancer, and he gained a reputation as a hotshot pilot, a smuggler, and a mercenary. He piloted a heavily modified YT-24000 light freighter called the Outrider. At one point in his travels, Dash ran into a hollow star called Javel Charn, and later he discovers that this woman was a part of the Rebel Alliance. Later on, Dash also delivered supplies to the Echo base on Hoth, and when he discovered that the Rogue Squadron was trapped on the planet, he helped them escape by staying over and helping the fight and take down an AT-AT walker. He was also hired by Lander Calrissian to track down Han Solo's frozen carbonite uh, uh, casing when he was being delivered by uh, Boba Fett to Jabba's palace. And the mission to the planet Gaal took place but was unsuccessful and Dash Randar couldn't retrieve Han Solo's body. He was also hired by Leia Organa to watch over young Luke Skywalker. This is sometime during the times of the Empire Strikes Back when there were attempts on Luke's life. And he actually saved Luke Skywalker from a swoop ba uh, gang on Tatooine. Dash and Luke went on a mission to recover plans to the second Death Star by raiding and transport called Suprosa. And the mission was indeed a success this time around, but because of Rendar's mistake, it cost the lives of many Bolton pilots. It is something that is actually referenced in the film, Return of the Jedi, right? One of the Alliance members says, many Bolthans died delivering uh, uh, this information. I actually think that was uh, uh, Mon Mothma who uh, says that line. And to make amends, Randar volunteers to rescue Leia Organa from Prince Shizor's palace on Coruscant. He's a very powerful overlord of this crime syndicate who had his own palace on Coruscant. In the aftermath of the battle with Prince Shizor, the Outrider, Dash Randa's ship, appears to be destroyed while fleeing Coruscant. But in reality, Dash basically faked his own death. He teams up with a human replica droid called Guri and formed his own mercenary team. Now, let's move on and talk about his personality traits and what kind of individual Dash was. We know from his description from the books that he's tall and lean, red-haired man. He's very good-looking and very clean-cut. He was popular personality with students and teachers in the Imperial Academy. And since his teenage years, he always strived for independence and he always challenged authority. And it's a streak that stays with him throughout his career in the Imperial Academy and past that point, even when he encounters the Rebel Alliance. Uh, he developed a romantic feelings for this holostar Javel Charn, and they do share intimate moments. But even after a close brush with her, he still wouldn't trade his uh, freedom in order to join her cause. And after his brother's death, he, made, uh, uh, he became very resentful of the Empire and the Black Sun Crime Syndicate. 
He developed a more chiseled, muscular appearance. He became a rugged, streetwise mercenary with a sharp wit. He was also a very skilled pilot, and he showed promise uh, as an in the Imperial Academy, but he also pushed any ships to their limits afterwards when he became an, an independent contractor. And he gained even more experience as a smuggler. Uh, we also know that he's a uh, personality-wise a thrill-seeker, and he boasted a lot that he could fly practically any ship. Uh, when he first acquired his uh, signature ship, the Outrider, he was eager to show it off to Han Solo. And actually, at one point, the two had a race, and uh, Han Solo won barely by a scratch, but Dash Rander still believed that he had a faster ship. Um, and he, uh, interestingly enough, his outward appearance uh, belied his noble streak. Because after those Bolton pilots were killed in the attack, he actually felt that he needed to make amends for that, and he volunteered to rescue Leia Organa. Now, what was my impression of uh, Dash Randar? I actually uh, was introduced to him through the one of the first Star Wars books that I read was Shadows of the Empire. I believe it was maybe 1999 or maybe 2000, somewhere around that area when I started reading Star Wars books. And um, I found out that it was actually a related video game a couple of years uh, later when I got a Nintendo 64. And what was cool about him, he didn't necessarily stand out as the lead character of that story, but I felt like he was a strong original character who really belonged in the Star Wars universe. Something about him, the way that his past is described, the way that he carries himself, and the kind of action scenes that he was involved with was very convincing. He was very, very... He fit the Star Wars universe like a glove. And his piloting skills and his firefight abilities showed to me that Luke and Han weren't the only guys who are strong, the only heroic types in Star Wars universe. Once again, you have to remember, this was the time period where we didn't have as many Star Wars comic books or novels. They were there, but they were much fewer in number. And to en encounter a character like this one, who didn't immediately stand out to you as like, oh, you know, this is our next hero, but yet he was so relatable and interesting that you started expanding your own version of the Star Wars galaxy and saying, hold on a second, there's more characters to it. You know, Han is a quick shot, and he's obviously ace pilot, but he's not the only one. And I know that even back at the time, there were some criticisms uh, among my friends who said, well, you know what, actually, I think he's a little bit too close to Han Solo. He's a lot like that character. But anyway, I thought he was very enjoyable. And later on, when I discovered the amazing Topps Cards illustrations by Greg and Tim Hildebrand brothers, I was blown away. I thought visually, Dash Rander to this day is one of the most interesting, appealing looking characters out there. Maybe it's his signature vest. Maybe it's always his uh, poses, uh, heroic poses when he's like holding a gun. Or maybe it's his ship, the Outrider. Something about this character has so much appeal to me. I wish more characters would look like him. You know, more distinct looking, more instantly recognizable, I guess. So what are my hopes for the future of Dash Randar? Well, obviously we have the Nintendo 64 game uh, uh, Shadows of the Empire. And we also know that it's available on Steam. But I would actually like to have this game remastered the Porter over for modern consoles. As per media, a company would I, which I love, these guys are the heroes of Star Wars video game fandom. They're basically porting over all the hottest Star Wars games on Nintendo Switch. We got a couple of games on PlayStation 4. We know that Nintendo 64 game Shadows of the Empire was heralded back in the day as one of the better adventure games overall. Not just Star Wars, it was considered one of the better games of its day. It had good adventuring, had phenomenal graphics for its day. Why don't they update it and throw it on Nintendo Switch? I would even go further and say, hey, hold on a second. Could you fully remake this game from scratch? That's not far-fetched. If we got games like Final Fantasy Remake, might as well remake this game there. I, I don't think it would take that much time and effort because all those stages are already built, all the voice work, all the cinematic is out there. You would just have to uh, give it a little facelift and update the graphics. Also, Dash Render appears in a canonical tom timeline of Star Wars. He's mentioned in the 2018 journal book by Jason Fry called Solo, A Star Wars Story, Tales from Vandar. They do this a lot with uh, popular Star Wars Legends characters, give them a quick name drop, uh, whether in a form of an Easter egg or just acknowledging what previous Star Wars authors have done in the past. 
Well, I think this is actually a great avenue to explore because in a way that's also testing the market and asking the fandom, it's like, hey guys, by the way, we name dropped Dash Randor in this particular book. Would you be excited to see more stories with him? And I think if the uh, fandom speaks up and says like, well, this character is still popular, we would still love to see more stories with him. Perhaps some future author will say, well, you know what? I come from the background that I've read a lot of Star Wars books in my time. Now I'm writing for Del Rey and Lucasfilm. Why don't I include this fan favorite Dash Rondar character? That could possibly happen. Uh, I would also like to see him introduced not only in novels, but also comic books. If we have something like Star Wars Visions, a non-canonical TV show, you might as well have comic books, which don't necessarily correspond with the current canonical timeline, just something on its own. That would be very cool and interesting to see. Or maybe even just to remaster the original Shadows of the Empire comic book and throw it out there on the market and see if fans enjoy this character. Um, also, I think it would be a perfect opportunity to include Dash Rendar in the upcoming The Bad Batch Season 2, because this is a perfect moment where we see this empire and the rebel cells forming all over the place obviously we had star wars rebels show but now this uh, uh the bad batch season two has a chance to go a little bit deeper go a little bit underground and deal with characters who are not necessarily force sensitive or jedi like ezra bridger so why not include uh, a renegade person who just escaped the imperial academy and is a mercenary for hire if we had lander calrissian obviously infinitely more popular character in Rebels, you might introduce another gunslinger type of a mercenary in the Bad Batch Season 2, but it would be Dash Render. I guarantee you guys, the moment he would show up in the show with his signature fast, fans would recognize who he is. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for checking out this character highlight. If you enjoyed Dash Render, please let me know in the comment section below what kind of media or what kind of stories would you like to see him in the future? And I'll try to respond to all of your comments. Thanks a lot for watching. If you enjoyed this highlight, please like this video, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys next time. Take care.